Smiley makes a few of their metal telescoping antennas and although they tend to be heavier and less convenient than a rubber duck they offer the advantage of being able to use one antenna throughout the whole spectrum of your band window that you might be operating in so for VHF that would cover you from around 144 up to 174. One of the very most popular antennas is this 270A dual band which they now call the tri-band but we're just going to be looking at the VHF and UHF ends as none of our specialty users uses the middle of that in uh, 220 megahertz area. So on our web page we just go over some of the pros and cons of using this antenna and uh, typically it's used by people that uh, really want to save money and uh, just carry the one antenna. It doesn't have any outstanding benefits in terms of performance over a properly tuned rubber duck. So it's not as popular as the IPX3 pack and more information here for example there's the telescoping UHF, telescoping Omni and so on. Now the reason that um, you need to tune this is because of your standing wave ratio and for a quick refresher on why standing wave is important we're going to have a look at this chart here and just briefly consider that uh, an ideal standing wave is right here at the top uh, which would be one to one basically and you see the amount of forward power that you're getting is about a hundred percent in other words none of the power is being reflected back into your radio and that is undesirable and it does happen and the trick is to try and keep it down to a manageable and reasonable level so typically a lot of handheld radio users try and keep everything under a standing wave of two which you can see here and that means then that you're getting about almost 89 percent of your power still going out as forward power and being transmitted. You probably will see mention that uh, perhaps up to three is acceptable for many and that's where you're getting 75 percent of your power being used to propagate your signal out and reach the distance. Now it's off this chart. This chart ends at 4 where you've got 64 percent of your power. You roughly hit about half of your power around 6. So just think you've got a 5 watt radio. Now you're effectively transmitting the equivalent of 2.5 watts. And this is why I often encounter people coming to me and they want to get for example a TYT 3000A radio with 10 watts and that's all they're focused on. They think that the 10 watts is going to make all the difference. They uh, then want to run off with the stock antenna which would give them uh, an SWR quite often of greater than 6 and now their 10 watt radio is really transmitting about the equivalent of 3.5 watts and they don't get the part where the antenna is more important than the radio and that's kind of the uh, evangelistic message that I constantly keep trying to convey to clients which seems to be the most misunderstood and indeed the one that they really don't want to hear about. Uh, in fact years ago I had a fellow who was working as a local paramedic who had previously apparently been working really as a rocket scientist he told me standing wave was a bunch of bullshit so um, I just asked him gee I hope you were working on unmanned rockets when you had your job we're gonna run over some of the optimal settings that appear to be best for the Smiley 270A dual band or sometimes called tri-band antenna and see what might work best for various applications. Here's the antenna 
fully collapsed and you can see that the best standing wave ratio in that configuration is here at uh, about 175 and that's uh, 1.2 but let's say you're out and you want to optimize this antenna for 150 then you will fully extend it all the way up and you can see that that actually makes it worse for 150 and what we're going to do now is collapse the two top sections sorry we're going to collapse three and two bottom sections so now I have visible only three sections on the antenna when I'm visualizing it and you can see here that our standing wave drops down to about 1.28 so that's for 150 again three tops and two bottom sections now if we wanted to move to 155 I'll move the marker up to that general area and I'm going to collapse another top section and see what that does to the 155 area and now we've got four tops collapsed two bottom sections and a standing wave ratio of 1.23 next we want to see how to get our best reading for the 160 area and if we look there we're still getting a good reading for 160 with that configuration of four tops and two bottoms down so now the next one we want to go to is improving 165 which is right in that area so what you're watching for is here is to move that standing wave down and what we're going to do is totally collapse the antenna and then I'm going to bring just the very top section up about halfway and um, give it a time to sweep for that and now we've got a standing wave of about 1.22 for 165 with one top up halfway and finally we're going to collapse the entire antenna again which is where we started and as you remember it's going to be optimal at that point for the 170 area which is right in about there and as well for about 175 so 170 to 175 you have the antenna fully collapsed and if you're interested in what is best for standing wave on the FRS channels you can go back through this and watch where you'll see over here now this green band on the right is FRS area and watch back through all those configurations and see where you got your lowest reading for the marker if it had been o sitting over here in this area with respect to counterpoise on the 270A we haven't seen much for a benefit on the VHF side of things and I don't have a UHF 6 inch counterpoise to try out on this antenna at this point in time I will do that at a later update right now what I'm looking at is I've got an 11 inch VHF counterpoise or rat tail with 10 AWG and the antenna is fully collapsed and I'm out at about a 90 degree angle and you can see here that that's giving me my optimal SWR for UHF around the FRS band of about 1.1 so this looks like it will increase UHF potential quite well and uh, these antennas the 270A are a good fit for the TYT TC568 as well and um, the antenna alone in testing in real field conditions uh, we get seven kilometers from it 
with the counterpoise it'll be a while before I can test that in the field being as we're in the middle of winter right now. I looked and I did find that I had a UHF 6 inch antenna. This is 12 gauge and uh, it appears to give about the same results on UHF as the longer 11 inch one counterpoise did. So if you have the 11 inch it can be just as effective in UHF as the 6 inch which is more effective with the 5 8 wave telescoping. <coughs> so that's possibly good news in terms of saving you some money. If you are using the Smiley 278 you don't need to bother getting the UHF rat tail if you want to improve your performance.